So I think that a lot of you are, some of you are valuing the serum and some of you are already using it and you're just coming today to sort of see if there's any features that you're missing or maybe you haven't used it in a long time. Um, city has been around for 10 years, so you maybe used it in 2007 and it looks so different now that it might look, you know, completely different and you may not be aware of all the different features that are available to you. So today I'm just going to go over briefly sort of what the serum is and um, who works on it and sort of what are the main features that most nonprofits um, use. So, Civi CRM is open source. So what that means is that Civi is uh, free to download and you, you know, it's, it's community contributed. So while there are people who work on the core team of Civi CRM, there actually is, are people who, who are employed by Civi CRM. A lot of the changes that are made to features within Civi and bugs that are fixed, fixed are fixed by people um, like myself and my colleagues. And then it's also, so it works, it's a CRM. So what that stands for, and the C can sort of be interchangeable based on what the database is. But um, in, in our case, it stands for contact relationship management. It can also mean constituent relationship management or customer relationship management. It just depends on which database you're using. And it works with Drupal, Joomla, and WordPress. And it was first released 10 years ago. We're actually coming up on the CRM's 10-year anniversary this summer. So who is the CRM? There are um, nine people on three different continents that are part of the core team of the CRM. Some of them are full time, some of them are part time, um, and then there's also a lot of a lot of companies like mine and some nonprofits that um, we're partners. So we, you know, are part of. We help plan conferences. We do some um, help with infrastructure. We go to these things called code sprints, which is where you go and just do a bunch of bug fixes at once. Um, and then there's end users. End users are also really involved in the sub serum community. So a lot of changes that are made are made because people ask for them. And there's a you know, sort of large con contingent of people who you know, need the same feature and either they fund it together or they make a good enough case that, that it should just be changed. So this is not all of the features, but it's a, it's a pretty good, um, it's a pretty good list of them. So uh, all of these things that you can do with Civic CRM, you can use it for your contact management. You can use it to have event registrations on your website. You can use it to send out emails to all of your contacts and members and tell them about events that you're having. Or maybe you, know, you email them and ask them for money. Or maybe you're just sharing your, your news from your organization. It does member management. It can collect. Um, online donations, but then also manage the ones that come to you offline. If you're an organization that has any sort of um, like issue queue or, or cases that you manage, so a lot of social service organizations will use something like um, the Civi case, which is the case management. It's, there's that. Um, you can also use it to have people fill out petitions and tell their local politicians. Um, to, you know, to stop doing something or in support of something. It also will help you with your get out the vote information. And then um, using, most recently, using an um, extension that's called Civi Volunteer. It will help you manage your, your volunteer, um, volunteers and tracking uh, your different volunteer um, capacity, so what someone's capable of doing, because organizations need volunteers for different kinds of things. So, so this year, and because it's open source, it's, it's, it integrates well with a lot of different things. So just this is not a comprehensive list of everything, but it's it's a good idea. So it will integrate with your CMS, and it that integration will range depending upon um, which CMS you have. The integration is the tightest with Drupal because that was the first. CMS um, that we're working with, that was built with the CRM. It was the first one. And then um, there's Joomla and then WordPress. WordPress has only been a city for about three years. And I'd say most people are on Drupal, but then Joomla and WordPress are almost equal at this point. Um, and then in terms of payment processors, you have a lot of options and they 
you know, we have, there's a lot that work with the Viserum because regionally different payment processors are the ones that work with CityWell. So, you know, maybe something like Stripe wouldn't work in, you know, the United Kingdom for some reason, or I know that New Zealand has, like, the most popular thing is called Pay Express, the most popular payment processor in New Zealand we wouldn't use here. Um, so it is, it is sort of, uh, can work in a lot of different areas of the world. And the, the functionality, we try to cover it so that it works well for a lot of different people. So this presentation is going to be a mix of using this, um, this slideshow and then also showing you stuff in a demo. So the, um, there's different ways of segmenting your data within the Serum. This is, um, there's something called groups, and that's how you send out mailings. You can also base permissions off that, and you can also have a saved group that's called the smart group, so it'll update based on whether or not someone is, still meets the criteria. So if I live in D.C., and I'm a current member in an organization, and you're searching for people who live in D.C. and are current members, I would be in that group. But as soon as I move into Virginia, I'm not in that group anymore, or my membership that was not in that group. But if someone new moves to D.C. and is a member, then they get added to that group. So it's, it's, a, it's a dynamic search. Um, tags are a little bit more temporary and can be used in a couple different entities that can be used um, not just with contacts. And then um, there are custom fields, and those can be customized for your site. So you can use those with any record type. You can use it with individuals, organizations. You can use it with contact subtypes, you can use it with events, participants, memberships, contributions, relationships. Um, if you have a record type, then you can use custom fields for it. So I'm just going to show you what that looks like. So this is the home page of the CRM once I've logged in. So I just upgraded this to 4.6 today, so this may look a teensy bit different, um, you know, if you're already in Civi and maybe you're still in 4.4 or in 4.5, but it shouldn't look that different. So if we're going to, and this is in Drupal too. It's like, let's, let's go look at my record. So here's an individual record, and you can see the different the tags that I have are right here. And then custom fields that I have are right here. And so these can show up in an individual's contact record at the bottom of that summary page, or they can actually show up right here um, where my mouse is. It can be a tabular. So sometimes people will do that because they um, want to, um, you know, they have a certain form that somebody has to fill out, and all of that data just relates specifically to that form if it's like some sort of release or um, about health insurance. They, they may make it tabular for the most part people organize that data here. You can see in this custom field, you have a lot of different options for um, how you enter data. So this right here, where it says most important issue, education, environment, social justice, that's called a radio field. And where you see marital status, that's a drop down. Marriage date, you can actually have a custom field be a date. And then um, here's another radio field. And then here's another where do you feel? So you can also have free text. I try to stay away from that personally only because it's harder to report on, um, but that, that works pretty well. And then we can go look at the list of groups. So you'll see, like, I'm not in any smart groups. I know I am. I'm in some smart groups, current members, members, and you can see actually group history. So one of my um, favorite things about groups is actually that you can see that someone was no longer in one. And where this becomes really helpful is if uh, you're using Serum for your bulk emailing. Because usually your email is, um, your bulk email list is based off of a group. So if someone unsubscribes themselves and then complains to you and says, why aren't I receiving the newsletter anymore? You can actually see that they unsubscribe themselves if you go into their contact record. And you can, move, you can put them back into the group. So let's say I want to be back in the summer program volunteers group. I can, I can be moved back in there. And then alternatively tags, they're just a little bit more 
Um, I like to use tags to help with my imports. They're just a little more temporary. Um, so I, I tend to, and they don't keep that, that history that, that groups do. So they, you know, I'll use them for imports and I'll use them for things like follow-up and, and prospect research, anything that maybe wouldn't be permanent. Um, but they're still really helpful along the way. And yeah, so just when you're thinking about segmenting your data, you have a lot of different options for how to do it, and it's really something that should be thought through about like, all right, well, where, how do I want to see this in a report? Because, you know, custom fields will show up in a report much differently than a tag or a group would. Okay. Back to the slideshow. I have to start over. Okay. So there's a bunch of different front-facing um, pages that you can have with the CRM. So you can have your donation page, your membership sign-up page, an event registration page, a um, just a regular old form. It's called a profile, or you can have a petition, and that's where someone, you know, says like save the whales, and they fill in their info, and then um, they get saved as having filled in that petition. So it all gets linked back to their contact records. So that's where the CRM is really powerful. Is that, you know. If I'm filling out my donation form, a membership form, an event registration form, I'm filling in a petition, I'm signing up to be a volunteer, that all links back to my one record based on my email address. Um, so it's, it's like a way to have a really comprehensive view of your, um, of your donors and your contacts if you don't have donors and you have members. So I can show you. And so how these pages get created will depend upon your CMS. Uh, Drupal will kind of just publish them as soon as they're saved and they're active. And they're really easy to link to. WordPress, you, um, you know, you have a little bit more control. You can say, I'm creating a new page in WordPress, and you choose to the theorem element. And Joomla works quite similarly to how WordPress does. So we can just go and look at some of these um, different pages and what they look like. So let's say I want to publish, I want to link to this. So this is what a Civitherum donation page looks like. There's not a lot going on um, on this page. There's not a big pitch, but this area right here, there's actually room to add in a, um, to add in an image, a logo. You can write a really long pitch. Um, there's also a footer for a page so if there's any sort of other information that you feel like you need to share with donors before they donate. You can put that in the footer. You also have the ability to um, provide thank you gifts if someone donates over a certain amount. And then you also can do something with, um, with in honor of or in memory of. So as soon as you click that, this is new, I think, in 4.5. As soon as I click in honor of, I can, I can enter in someone's name, and their contact record will get created, and they'll get soft credit for the gift that I'm giving. There's a contribution page, and we can work at a membership page too. So this is interesting because I'm signed in. So it's actually telling me um, when my membership is expiring and when it expired most recently. So my associate membership expired on December 31st, 2014, and I have a general membership through March 2017. So the two membership options on this page, I can choose one. And um, you feel this, in, this is almost the same exact um, as the contribution page. All a membership sign-up pages is a contribution page with the membership section enabled. So actually, we can look at a different one, too. So then what this page does, this, ha this is the, um, a page where you can actually, someone can sign up for multiple years of membership. So if I wanted to have, so you, people get a discount if they sign up for three years, they get a discount of $5 per year. So you can get three years for $60 or one year for $25. And it would create their membership and make it three years long. If they're already a member, it extend it by three years, um, so long as they're choosing the same membership type. And then, so what you see here, this name and address in this newsletter sign up, are um, they are just, they're called profiles, and so profile is is a form into the theorem. It's a collection of fields, and 
So this one is called name and address, and it's collecting my name and address information. And then I also have a newsletter sign up. So if someone fills in this form, uh, because you have my email address because I'm donating, and I say that my, what, you know, I'm telling you my most important issue is, as soon as I fill out this form, then I'm then on the newsletter list, in addition to um, having my, renewed my membership. So it does not look like this page has, oh, there it is. Yeah, so as soon as I click on an actual type, it'll, this billing information and my billing address will show up. And so if I copied it down, I'd be able to share them between the two, which is pretty nice. We now can look at an event page. So I want to go to the info link. Every time you create an event to the CRM, there are um, two pages that are created potentially. Um, if we didn't so we volunteer, I guess there would be three pages that are created. And so just by creating the event and saving it and saying it's active, an info page will be created. And that's what this is. And so what that will have is just like the most basic information about the event, where it's taking place, how much the tickets are, how you should contact the person who's running it, and um, when it's taking place. And so if I then click on this register now button, it takes me to the actual registration screen. So some people opt, will opt to, um, to only use the registration page. So if you do that where it says register here, you can put in information about the event that's on that info page, like where it is and um, other things. You can also add an image of last year's event maybe or if it's an anniversary gala, that kind of thing, you can um, use the logo. Or if it's a conference and you have you know, specific branding to the conference, you can add that onto the page. It's pretty customizable. And so here, you can fill, this is um, one of the registration profiles, and so it's actually asking you for your meal preference. If you have one, um, you can choose your, your ticket amount. And it's very similar to the other page. You can sign up for an email. You can also um, add an extra donation. You can tell it that I'm paleo. And you can continue, and then you're, you know, you'll go on to be registered for the event. Then I'm going to show you a form. So, okay. Here is a front-facing form. So the reason that you would use this is maybe you have a, um, you want people to be able to sign up to say that they're interested in volunteering for something, or you want to um, be able to just have people fill out a survey this way, um, and you don't want to use a full survey you can use one of these front-facing forms that are called a profile. So I can just sort of briefly show you what's involved in that. So this is the list of all the profiles we use in the site. And you'll notice that they all have, um, a lot of them have names that would be okay if someone saw them because whatever the name you give the profile, someone will actually see. So if we go to add a new one, this is where we decide that it's a standalone form. So where we're able to then create it and have it um, have that um, show up on a page on its own. So we can call this volunteer interest. And anybody who fills out this form will then be put in a special volunteer um, interest group and they will get emails about upcoming events. So I'm going to add them to a new group called Volunteer Prospects. And then you can just add your field. So since we're looking for individuals, you can require stuff on the profile level. You can only do a few fields. We don't spend a lot of time on this. It's nice that you can change the label as you um, Create the profile. So now we can go look at it, and this is what it look, this is what it would look like. So you can actually take have the standalone on its own page. But if you look at if you go back to list the profiles, 
Facebook, I mean, that tries this HTML form snippet, you can actually have it live on its own. If you just copy this info. So I think it's, it's pretty handy myself. And then if you use something called campaign, you can save the whales. Please fill form to save the whales. And you just decide, or so we just want it to be um, contact information. So if we, so if I, when I click on sign, it actually is taking me to the save the whale, um, save the whale's petition that I just made. It, I would recommend that you look at which profile you're using more carefully than I just did, but it uh, because it it does uh, it feels a little funny. But once I figured this, you know, filled this out, I'd sign the petition, and then there'd be a report that reflected that I signed the petition. Is that easier for folks to see if I zoom in? I know the city's font is small. Okay, so. Right. So back to um, back to my presentation. So the other um, the other thing that you're able to do with City really, really well is use it for uh, searching and uh, reporting on the information that you've entered into the system. So there's a few different search options that you can use, and there's also about 30 reports that come with to the CRM. So if you go and look, this is a list of all the different things that you can search on, so you can find contacts. That's this quick little search right here. And then advanced search, and that is a, a little bit more advanced, but it's probably the one that you'll use most often because it lets you search on multiple things. So if I wanted to find people who had donated in the last two years and their membership is current, you can also get pretty specific. So if you want to say custody donation and their membership is current. Hopefully I get some oh I got a result. That's me. So the one proviso I should I should have made at the beginning is that uh, demo data is really funny to work with. Um, a lot when I'm when I'm doing these demos they'll find that there's I'll get no results. So I'm I'm glad that that someone came up even if it's me. Um, so you'll be able to see this criteria. This is how you'd make your smart group, your safe search. So you could say, all right, with these results, I'm going to make a new smart group. And then I'd name it donors who are members. And then I'd save it. And then as soon as someone else, you know, donated this year or was a current member, they'd get added to that group. You can always edit the criteria for this. If you think that it's too broad or maybe you think it's too narrow, you can always edit it, which is nice. Um, and then the other nice thing about advanced search is that you can also change what you see in the search setting. So you can change it to a different view. So maybe you don't want all of that info that you saw. So all you see is first name, last name, city, state, instead of you know the first name, last the name, and then address, city, state, phone number. Um, you can you can modify that too. But there also just generally are a lot of options that you have with this actions dropdown. So I'd explore this a little bit more on your own because we literally could talk about this for over an hour. Um, but you can add contacts to an event, a group, a household, an organization. You can batch update them. So if everybody's supposed to have a field filled out, they don't have it filled out, you can update that here. 
You can delete people. You can export them. You can create new mailing labels. You can merge two contacts, not, not 142. You can make a smart group like I just made. Uh, you can send everybody a letter, and on and on and on. Um, you can add people to a group. You can send them an email. Um, there's really a lot that you can do with search results, and I love using search. And then there's all these entity searches. So all of this stuff that you see here, these relationships, demographics, members, events, all that. So you can actually search on some of that outside of this advanced search. So say you just want to see information on member memberships and members, you'll notice that you see much different information. So I see myself and all my different memberships that I have. <coughs> And you'll notice that, that instead of seeing information about me, about my address and that sort of thing, you see information about my membership. And it's the same thing when you search on events. And the reason that is helpful is because you can do different things with different search results. So if I am searching for event participants, let's say I can cancel registration. I can change their status from registered to attended, and I can also make name badges. I couldn't do that on that regular advanced search because I'm searching on contacts. Okay, and then here's our very long list of reports. So these are all, most of these are reports that Kansas City. I made a couple of them um, for testing, but for the most part, these are canned reports that just come with to the CRM. And there's a lot of them. So you'll see different reports available to you depending upon um, what, what modules within the CRM you have enabled. And what I mean by modules is, are you using events? Are you using memberships? Are you using um, contributions? Because not everybody uses all of those things. And you can have things enabled or disabled. So not everybody uses campaign. and Not everybody uses um, something like grants or pledge. And so if you're not using those, you're not going to see those reports. So let's just look at a constituent detail report. And so here are all the different, um, these are the different custom fields. And then this is actually new in 4.6, I haven't seen this yet. And then you can do your filtering and you can change your, um, your title of your report. So anytime you make a change to a report, you should change the title of it so that you don't match with the original um, of the report, and then you can also have a scheduled job that sends the report to you um, regularly, and you can choose you know, how often that's sent, and then you can also have something that's available for the dashboard. The dashboard is what we saw on that home page. So this report has a lot going on because it's really it's like a full picture of someone's relationship with your organization. And so right now we're looking at Donald Adams. We can see that his, his he only has one contribution. It's $25 member dues. Um, you can see his membership type and his relationships, his recent activities, and then it will go to the next contact. So you can add different um, things and then also take away things. So we also want to see his city and state. And now we'll see that uh, um, Donald Adams lives in Fort Drum, New York. We can look at look at a membership report too. So here's our list of, of um, members. So here's all our members. If I was looking, so you'll see like membership type, start date, end date, and I'll show you their status. Clearly our, our um, status checker isn't turned on right now because um, it looks like people who expired at the end of December of last year are still new members. So but you're, it should not look that way. It's not running, but you still get a, a good picture of what someone's membership is. And it will show the same person more than once if they have more than one membership. And 
term, let's say we also want to see their email address and their state. But again, and now it looks a lot different. And the other really handy thing, if I go use this membership summary report, is if I click on one, so it, it's totaling things by, by date. And so it's saying that there's two new members, June 2013, um, who are students, two are associates, and three who are organizations. So if I go click on that June 2013, it's, it's telling me who it is. So I think that that's, that's actually pretty handy. So it's taking you from this summary report to detail report. There's a bug in the report, though, because it's totally wrong. Um, any questions about reports? You can chat them or save them on the phone. Um, all right, I just saw Kat Kelly's chat. We're actually about to get to event features in just a second, so we can. Um, we'll get to that really soon. So just a list of the different um, Divi Contribute features. If uh, the problem is. OK, so the different features of um, Divi Contribute is that there are integrated donation pages, as I showed you. And you make that donation page, um, that contribution page, and it just it can show up on your site really easily, and you're not sending someone somewhere else unless you're using a payment processor where the payment, pro the payment takes place on another site. So it's just nice that you have full control over your data. Um, it also will allow for recurring contributions if you're using a payment processor that supports that. Um, and if you would like to have honorary or memorial gifts, you can turn that on on your page. Um, you can also have a way for someone to say that they're pledging money for your organization, and they can set up the payment plan. And then there's something called personal campaign pages. And that's where you let people create their own donation pages that sort of are based off of uh, the, the main donation page for you and then fundraise for you. So a lot of organizations have used this really successfully. And if you're interested in knowing more about that, there's a really good session at Silicon um, where you might be able to get a little bit more info. So, so the member features, similar to, um, to donations, there's live sign up on your website. You do not have to send someone somewhere else. And if someone's logged in, it will tell them that they already have a membership. So they won't you know, renew if they, if they you know, just renewed, but it will also tell them, hey, you're expired. Um, and then you can also manage memberships in multiple organizations. So this is really helpful if you are managing um, let's say you have like you give benefits to a partner organization, you give benefits to their members. If you're a museum or um, some sort of arts organization, they do that a lot. And so then that way you're able to, you know, check in on someone that way. Um, you can have as many different membership types types as you want, and different fee levels. Uh, you can have you can use an extension called City Discount to have an automatic discount for event registration for members. You can also set up renewal reminders to go out to say, hey, your membership's expiring in 30 days. Your membership's expiring in seven days. Your membership expired last month. Um, and it will send, it can take someone right to the, the um, expiration page and uh, to the renewal page. And then there's this really interesting feature where you can have a membership benefits shared through relationships. So this is most often used for, with associations if the organization is signing up as the member, then, um, then their employees also receive those, those benefits. And it also happens with households who, if the household signs up as, as a family member, then the membership benefits could share down to the family. Um, and then you can have the renewal date and have statuses work specific to your organization structure. And where this is helpful is if your membership matches up to your fiscal year. So let's say your fiscal year starts April 1st, and your membership can start April 1st. Um, if you want to have a fixed membership, that can also be rolling. And then some organizations, especially associations, like to not have members go to expire. 
right away. They want them to maybe have benefits for a little bit longer before they just take their benefits away. So, so the event features. Um, so it takes real-time registration. There's a built-in early bird function to when you set up the event. Um, and it, what's missing here um, is that, and Kelly asked a question about this, is that you can um, actually let one person in an organization register multiple people. And so when you're going to that event sign up, you can say, I'm registering four people, and you fill out, and you can say, I'm not one of the people attending. So it will you know, be linked back to the right person who paid, but the registrations will get created for the, for the three other people, the four other people that they're signing up. Um, so that, that's really nice. Um, and then like the renewal, it will, like the renewal reminders of memberships, it can also send out emails to attendees that says, you know, you're, you're coming to an event in two days. You know, please, please, I hope please, I hope you can still attend, that kind of thing. Um, and you can also set something up to go out uh, right after the event, maybe with a survey or just as a thank you for coming. And then, like I told you before, it uh, will let you do name badge creation. And um, CiviMail. So CiviMail is the bulk mailing system within CiviCRM, and it will do your, your click and open tracking. It will um, do something called tokens. Um, it's like a merge field, so it makes it easy for someone if they click from the email to be able to fill in a donation page or an event registration page without logging in where all their information is included that you have. Um, and then it also will handle your bounces and unsubscribes. And you can just create creating templates. There's not an easy wizard within the CRM, but if you have anyone within your organization who's good at HTML and CSS, you can, you can go uh, a little wild there and decide, you know, what you want it to look like. And then there's also built-in testing. So you can have a group that you have as your test group. You send them uh, a test email and you know, see how it looks. Oh, I just saw, sorry Steve, I just saw your, your I did not realize there was a delay and stuff coming up. Is there something that anyone wants me to go back, back to that was missed because the, the video is showing up too slowly? No? We have, ten, we have about 10 minutes for questions. Okay. We have 10 minutes for questions if anybody wants to ask a specific question or wants me to go into to anything more in depth. I know this is a lot to cover in an hour, um, and I didn't want to overdo it, but I because you know, I wanted to make sure there was time for, for people to ask specific questions at the end. Jane, could you tell us what are the uh, uh, servers that we could put City CRM on? Sure. So City so CRM is, is um, web-based, so we mm -hmm. tend to recommend um, having City so CRM on a, a virtual private server, and that's mm -hmm. because um, it just tends you have a bit more control over running upgrades. Um, and you know, with the installation and any sort of custom development that has to take place. Um, but then um, it also just means that if you're using Civic Serum for bulk mail and you're sending mail out from your server, that you're not, sh if, that you're not, um, if someone's doing something really spammy, you're not affected by what they're doing. Okay. So do you have some recommended virtual private servers? So we, we tend to recommend Linode, and that's because they, uh, it, they're pretty cost effective, and they, it's not managed hosting though, and so the upside of that is that they're not making you use a bunch of, um, they're not making you use a bunch of features that you don't need, and you have as much control over the site as you, as you want, but if you're, if you're not comfortable 
uh, doing work within um, like the command line, and it, it can be a little daunting. Right. But and as far as it's, it's, it is the cheapest, most reliable um, VPS you're going to find. That's Lino? L-I-N-O-D-E. L -I -N -O -D -E. Oh, okay. And that's uh, using Linux command line? Yeah. Okay. Mailing labels. Okay. I can try and do that fast. Um, but actually, the mailing label, one of these. I don't know where it is. The, there's a mailing label uh, setup that you do. So you can say label formats under communication. So you can you tell it your label format. There's a lot that are already in there. You, I would not recommend adding your own format. There's, you have to know PHP to be able to do that. But pretty much everything you could possibly need is here. Um, so then when you go to um, when you do your search, quickly pick a couple different people. So Donald, Jane, Richard Adams, and we choose our um, mailing labels. It will then take you to the screen where it's asking you um, which kind of label you want to use. And um, don't print labels for people who are do not mail. And then it will create a PDF that hopefully will have data in it. This one is not. This is not configured right, but that's how you would do it. I hope I hope that helps. Um, Kelly would like to see some nonprofits who are using Civi and WordPress. So I can show you one of my clients. This is Red Wiggler Community Farm, and this is a to the CRM donation page. This is a little bit of um, of uh, customization for them because they wanted some. Um, they wanted to call the car and get something else, so that looks like that's off the page. This is a pretty standard donation page in WordPress. And I think if I can think of anyone else. So this is probably the best example. Let's use it in the most traditional way. And then um, they also manage their CSA. Um, payment on their site. So this is actually a, a very uh, customized membership page that uh, they're able to just reuse every year. So this is a good example of like if you pay for a little bit of custom development design that you use all the time, then um, it's worth it because it saves you time every year. Uh, so that's a donation page. I don't think they have any events. They do. Yeah. So here's a page. They did a really they've done a really good job of utilizing, you know, the different options on the info page and the register page. You see they have images. They have some um, info about the event and then you go to register for it and here's their form. All right, what else do we the pros and cons of of for WordPress using the WordPress database versus an external database. I'm not sure I understand the question. Do you mean um, WordPress, like Civisterm within WordPress, or using a Word, some other WordPress uh, database? This is for Steve who just asked this question. Okay. Oh, I understand. So sharing the sharing the database between with WordPress, is there an upside to that? Is that what the question is? Okay. Um, personally, I like to have them share the same database, and that's only because it makes backups faster and easier. Uh, in Drupal, there's a definite upside to it, which is that it makes the, the Drupal um, so the CRM integration a little bit easier. So if you're using Drupal views um, or 
permissions, it makes that a little bit easier to, to manage. So I would do it for that case also of WordPress in case down the line um, that that permissioning gets a little bit easier to manage. So like if someone your membership status can affect your your um, your login to a site. WordPress doesn't currently have that function, but it doesn't mean it won't. Any other questions? Jane, is it possible to um, import data from a, a current database into CV? Um, yeah, so it just depends on what the database is. So I've probably imported um, stuff from, I, I think I've probably imported things from like 15 different databases at this point. Some of them are custom, some of them are not custom. Um, some of, you know, it's like I've done Kintera, I've done um, Salesforce. Convio, um, a couple different AMSs. Uh, so, and then a lot of times it's just from a spreadsheet. So it, it, it depends. What I like to do, and this is a good tip for everybody if you're in the middle of just beginning to evaluate. So the theorem, if you do decide to work with it, is that your, um, your current database will come with an ID for that person that they had in that database. You need to keep that ID because it's the easiest way to link all the records together. So when you're importing someone in, to so the CRM, you can use um, you can use that ID as the external records that you can then make sure that their their membership goes over, and it's also just a good way to sort of be able to look at the data back and forth to make sure it went in cleanly. Um, and it it imports and exports um, with into a CSV, which can be opened in Excel, but the formatting will change a little bit. Um, Nikki asked, how do you find a consultant to help um, implement to so the CRM? So there is a list on CivicCRM.org that I should know the address of, but I don't off the top of my head. I can find it. Um, so if you go, oh, so find an expert. So CivicCRM.org slash providers. And so this is a list of, um, of different organizations, that, the different companies that work with the CRM, and it will tell you where they are and um, what these active contributor and supporting partner, what these mean is um, active contributor is do they um, give back to the community? Do they contribute code? Do they help with code sprints? Do they volunteer at conferences? Uh, you t you're going to want a consultant that does that only because it means that they really are involved with the um, with the code into the theorem, and it means they just understand things a little bit better generally. Um, and then supporting partner, that means that they financially support to the theorem in some way. So there's supporting partners and sustaining partners, and I think there's one other level. So you'll find a list here, um, you know, and it's all about like, here's my company. Um, it's all about like, if you want someone that is local, or if you want someone that specializes in WordPress, um, you know, you can you can really you narrow it down that way um, to find a consultant. Any other questions? It's it's four o'clock now, so if you all want to hang up, I want to take it personally. How easy is it for it to work with uh, QuickBooks? There's a little bit of integration involved, but okay. um, but it's not. You just have to follow the instructions. Um, okay. And there there's a there's a session pretty much every year at Civicon. <clears throat> so if you watch that session, you should have a pretty good idea. If you already understand QuickBooks and, and you already mm -hmm. understand accounting, then it it won't be as difficult as it is for people who don't understand that. Because I think where it becomes an issue is. Um, to sort of the batching and understanding how that all works, um, mm -hmm. uh, kind of thing. So I would, um, yeah, I, I, you just you put in the accounting codes, make sure that there's a code that matches up to each thing, matches up to your QuickBooks. So the theorem has a, um, it will export the file type that QuickBooks is looking for to have the integration go back and forth. So it's not automatic, but it does recognize that there's a um, there's a specific sort of file type that, that needs to go into QuickBooks. 
Mm, I see. So if we were to look for the instructions to make this uh, compatible with QuickBooks, where do we find that? So this is this is another good um, just resource in general. So can you go to civicerum.org? Actually, if you go to book. Civicerum.org, you'll get a list of different um, resources with Civicerum. So one of them is um, the documentation wiki. It's probably in there, but it could also be in the user and administrator guide. We can check okay. So this is a this is a community created book. Um, they work on it at the, at the code sprint. There's also documentation sprint. So every time there's a new release, the documentation also has to get updated as well. Oh. So if we go look at this. Contributions, accounting integration. Um, it looks like this is actually a pretty good uh, description of what to do. I so see. you can go okay. to book.sovacerum.org. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, feel free. I think my email address, um, you all have it at this point. So if you need to, um, Contact me with any follow-up questions. Please feel free to do so. And I don't. If you're, any of you are based near DC, we are having a DC uh, conference called the Citizen User Summit in September in Washington DC. So I hope to see some of you there if you can make it. And um, thank you for listening. And sorry about the technical difficulties at the beginning. I uh, appreciate your understanding. Your understanding. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.